What up, everybody? My name is Kelvin McNeil, and welcome back to my channel where we discuss financial wellness, mindset therapy, and real estate. I'm making a video that I wish, I so wish I had available when I was going through the home buying process for the very first time a couple of years ago. Now, I'm going to take you through step by step what the home buying process is like, and then more importantly, why you should work with someone like me as a mortgage loan originator and mortgage broker. So in a few seconds here, I'm going to go ahead and pull up this presentation and I'm going to treat you just like I do all of my clients. Every client that I get, I walk through this exact same presentation. Now it may change uh, depending on when you're watching this video, since this will be posted to YouTube. But if you have any questions or concerns, you know, you can always book a, a free mortgage consultation with me um, or even head over to my website, which I will show you at the end of this presentation. All right. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So first and foremost, for those of you who may not know who I am, and this is your first time coming to my channel, my name is Kelvin McNeil. I'm a mortgage loan originator and mortgage broker at Nexa Mortgage. And my NMLS number, as you can see there, is 201-8085. Mortgage planning is all about making sure that I do set the proper expectations, but why you need a mortgage planner is because getting a home today may seem very difficult. A couple of years ago, when I was going through the home buying process for the first time, I didn't know what to expect. The only thing I knew is that I need to have a certain credit score. Um, they're going to take a look at my financials most likely. And the only thing I really cared about was, am I going to get approved? But as the process began, I immediately understood that I was way more into this than I originally thought. So the benefits of working with someone like me is I'm going to make it an educational experience, right? You're going to get a unique approach to mortgage planning, which allows me to give you that financial education as we go through the process, uh, giving you clear financial options. So you're not just stuck with one bank. I have access to over 200 lenders. So depending on your situation, we should be able to find you a company that's willing to work with you and give you the money that you need to get approved. And of course, we do also have uh, the best technology for a more efficient financing process. Now, I built my business one client at a time, so you will get that one-on-one -on -one attention from me, unlike a lot of the you know biggest mortgage lenders where they'll have you... Uh, basically assigned to an army of people and you got all these different people talking to you. It's a much better process when you have that one-on-one -on -one relationship, both with you, the borrower and the realtor. So for all of my realtors watching, let me know if you need help. I got you. What is mortgage planning? I do both residential and commercial uh, mortgage advising. Okay. Now, regardless of what uh, Grant Cordon and a lot of these other real estate investors want to tell you because they want to keep you renting for life. Buying a home is probably the largest financial decision that most of us will make in our entire life. And I'm definitely excited and would be honored uh, to play a small role in making that a reality for you. Now, together, we can definitely help navigate those waters. And it is my goal to help you get around any potential uh, icebergs or anything like that so we can get you across the finish line or reach your destination and be smooth selling throughout the entire process. And how do I do that? I do that by making sure you understand all of your options and have clarity navigating the buying process. But most importantly, I definitely want you to be positioned for financial freedom, which is you know what I talk about uh, with my uh, mentorship with business credit and everything else. Um, but most importantly, you know, I want you and I to have a great relationship on my YouTube channel. I rarely talk about myself, but I'm gonna give you five seconds about who I am. Now I was born and raised in North Carolina. I live in Savannah, Georgia. I'm licensed in several States. Uh, my hobbies include, you know, learning how to play the guitar. As you can probably see behind me, I have a guitar back there and fitness and lifting weights. You know, that's what I like to do. But uh, back in 2019, I started Greenscale LLC and we help hundreds, and I do mean hundreds of families, both current and aspiring homeowners improve their credit with our award-winning credit repair program. Now, I don't have to tell you about the YouTube channel because <laughs> we're on YouTube and uh, I love each and every single one of my almost nearly 130,000 subscribers at this point. Uh, where I talk about financial wellness, mindset therapy, and real estate, as I remind you guys at the beginning of every one of my videos. But 
I genuinely, genuinely love to help others by sharing helpful information and helping home buyers get approved, most importantly. So there are three promises that I want to make to you. That's having effective communication, because whether it's credit repair or whether it's me helping you get approved throughout the loan process, I need to be proactive. And I always ask every single one of my customers at the beginning of the process, do I have your permission to you know, be transparent and to give you bad news? Because as a loan officer, one of the most difficult things that we have to do is communicate bad news. So I want to get that out the way at the beginning. And most of my clients have no issues with that. And that's why I'm able to, again, help us navigate those waters and get across the finish line and try to take away any stress. Right. And of course, you know, being uh, upfront about things is the way that we can uh, try to get across the finish line. Now, second, I guarantee that any question you have, I will answer. And even if I don't know the answer, trust me, I'll go get that answer. For me, it's important to make sure that you fully understand everything. I will never rush you. And the third promise that I'll make is that I will do everything in my power to ensure that we close on time. All right, let's go into the next slide. Now, why is it so hard to get a home loan nowadays? I know it can be frustrating, but let me take you on a, a quick uh, timeline of how we got here. Now, back in the wild, wild west days of mortgage lending, that's what I call it, in the years of 2004 to 2006, we can summarize that time period with one word, and that's simply greed. There was a lot of uh, shady, predatory lending happening. You know, a lot of uh, mortgage lenders that were just trying to take advantage of people. And then at the same time, you know, we had things like stated income, where you could just say you make a uh, hundred thousand dollars without having to provide any type of documentation. Uh, it was really wild back then, and that permitted banks to engage in things like hedge fund trading. And because of these loosened mortgage approval guidelines, pretty much anybody could get approved for a mortgage, which led to what happened in the years between 2008 and 2010. And that was the big real estate market crash that you have probably heard about, right? Um, that's when home prices dropped 34%. The stock market crashed in September of 2008. Uh, President Obama was elected around that time. And then his number one job was the economy, which without getting too political guys, of course, he did inherit the worst economy since the Great Depression, okay? Which started with Wall Street reform, the large banks and mortgage real estate industries. Now this began the over-regulation of the mortgage industry that we know today. Fast forward, uh, then we had 2010 to 2016. That's when all of these regulations happened, okay? You got the bailouts, the bills, and the recovery. Long story short, a lot of different laws were put into place to protect both you and I. The CFPB was formed, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, the DOT Act Frank was put in place, all of which are still in place today. All right, so now this will be fun. <laughs> I'm going to take you through uh, what it would look like timeline wise to go through the full process from, from the time you apply to the time you make your first mortgage payment and you get those keys. All right. Now, I do want to you know preface the fact that although I broke this down as like a full calendar month, all of this can happen in the matter of a few weeks all the way down to under a week. It just depends on your circumstances and what lender uh, we rock with. But all right, so step one, let's say you're looking to buy a house. We're gonna start here on Monday. Let's say you meet with me and we provide the documentation needed to complete your loan application. A few days later, we move on to Wednesday. Congratulations, you're approved, right? It, it could be that quick in just a matter of a few days, 24 to 40 hours. Now you have your pre-approval letter. Now with that pre-approval letter, you can then take that to your real estate agent to make an offer on a house that you find, let's say Friday, Saturday, and then boom, uh, over the weekend, your offer is accepted, right? So your real estate agent will forward that uh, contract, that sales contract over to me uh, Kelvin McNeil for review. 
The very next thing that will happen is we will schedule a home inspection, okay? Your realtor will go ahead and uh, order that for you so you don't have to worry about that. And if needed, uh, they will also negotiate with the seller's agent to resolve any deficiencies found in that home inspection. The very next thing, Wednesday, is the disclosure package. Yes, that's when I will send you the information about your loan. We'll just need you to sign it. You know, I'll actually uh, do a Zoom call with you and go through everything so you can have any ans any questions answered. Uh, then the very next day, uh, you have the order appraisal because my team will make sure that we you know take care of that appraisal order for you. Now, the next step is once the title work is ordered, okay, because we got to order the title work, the title company is going to do a basically a, a background check on the property to make sure there's nothing outstanding like, you know, uh, liens, tax liens or anything like that. We have to make sure that you as the buyer have a homeowner's insurance quote. Now, most of the time uh, you will need or you will be required to carry homeowners insurance. Um, but, you know, we'll take it from there. Once you get that homeowners insurance quote next, we're going to lock that interest rate. OK, now you and I will talk about interest rates. I'll show you the interest rates um, and depending on you know where they're going, are they going up? If they're going up, then we may want to lock that rate sooner. Um, but if it's floating, um, or maybe, you know, going up and down, you know, we may decide to, you know, lock the rate a little later. We can do 15, we can do 30 day locks. It just depends. But <laughs> uh, the short end of it is we have to lock the rate in order to get you conditionally approved. So you're not going to get that full approval just yet. This is going to allow the underwriter to go through and make sure that everything is is just as you said it right they're going to go through and what we call scrub the documents to make sure that your uh your income is correct and everything else is correct so remember a week ago we ordered the appraisal but now this is the day that uh the appraiser had available on his schedule him or her they come out and they do the appraisal okay now let's fast forward to now that we got the final feedback and what we call the final conditions back from the appraiser. Uh, now we know we are clear to close. So let's just, you know, assume that everything was good and the appraisal came back uh, where we hoped it did come back at. So now it's time to uh, get that final CD, the closing disclosure. The closing disclosure is going to show you exactly how much this loan cost, what your payment is, what your final interest rate is, and everything in between. And again, of course, I will go over that document with you. Now, after you receive and sign the closing disclosure, there's a three-day waiting period that's always going to be required. And the lender does issue that final disclosure. Um, and then boom, you know, that's essentially what we call the pre-closing review to go over those final numbers. That gives us time to clear up anything if it needs to be cleared up. Now, the next thing is, uh, let's say the appraisal is done. We're good to go. Now we ha we have the final approval. OK, once you have that final approval, all we got to do is essentially wait till closing day. You know what I'm saying? The first time everything is good, then we can just, you know, push past to getting that uh, that wire, that escrow. So if you don't know what escrow is, when you make your deposit, you got to go ahead and put that money into the escrow account. Uh, we we'll, you know, we're going to walk you through that process if you've never done it before. But essentially, you know, you can wire the money to the title company or the closing agent uh, company and they will take care of that for you. Uh, we do the closing, the, the actual signing of the closing. And on that day is when the deal is officially funded. And congratulations, your loan has been funded, a.k.a. Uh, you have officially purchased the property. They're going to give you the keys. We'll take a, a, a nice picture with the big key or the, you know, or the uh, the for sale sign and all that good stuff with the agent. I do it, too, as well. Um, and then you're going to hear from me just to kind of give you an update or a reminder, I should say, in 30 to 60 days uh, when your first payment is due. Now, that's the whole process. Keep in mind, um, this can happen a lot quicker. You know, I've been involved in closings that happen in literally a few days. All right. Now, those, of course, are refinances, but <laughs> purchasing typically takes at least a few weeks. 
Now, real quick, let's talk about the do's and don'ts when applying for a home loan. <clears throat> you will need to provide your social security number for pulling the credit. Now, if you work with me, I'm gonna have you do that all on your own on a website that we provide to you. And you don't have to worry about that, right? You won't be giving out your social over the phone um, unless you just really need help, you know, doing the credit pool. But outside of that, you don't need to give your social security number to anyone else at all throughout that entire process outside of, again, uh, credit pools, okay? So let's go through the full list of don'ts. So you don't wanna make any major purchases. I don't care if it's a car, I don't care if it's a credit card, jewelry, uh, student loans, avoid simply applying for new credit. That's the number one rule. Why? Because if you do, let's say you go out and get a car or a personal loan, now that could jack up your, your DTI, your debt to income ratio, and that could take you out of qualifying for that loan. And now we just wasted all this time and you no longer qualify for the loan because we have to, let's say your, your payment is a thousand dollars. We got to add that a thousand dollars to everything else that you already have to pay from credit cards and student loans and everything else. And guess what? That includes gym memberships. And I mean anything. So don't open any new accounts, anything that requires you to pay a monthly fee, just don't do it. Wait until after you get those keys. You get those keys, you can Uber from the attorney's office with your new keys from, from your new house and you can go right to the dealership and get that car <laughs> that you've been wanting to buy, but just don't do it until after. Now, also don't close any credit card accounts, okay? Because if you do, this could drop your credit score. We wanna make sure that your credit stays right where it is, if not improving. So don't do that. Don't change bank accounts either. Don't max out any uh, credit cards, you know, because as you know, your overall credit card utilization accounts for 30% of your FICO score. So, you know, you want to be paying down debt. You don't want to be adding debt because that drops your score as well. This one may be a little tricky, but again, don't consolidate your debt onto another credit card because what this does is let's say you're like, hey, you're at my DTI is high. I'm going to apply for a, uh, a debt consolidation loan to pay that off. Well, if you're doing a cash out refinance, that's really the only time you can consolidate your debt without messing up your chances. So if you can pay down your credit cards, just do that versus opening a new credit card for a balance transfer or opening again, a new loan just to consolidate the debt that you already have, all right? Just don't do it. Consult with me first at least, and then I'll give you uh, the yes or no on if that may mess up something. Don't even open a new phone account. You know why? Because when you apply for a new phone, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, whatever, they're going to pull your credit and that's gonna be a new inquiry and that could drop your score anywhere from 15, 20 points, right? So if you're already at that, uh, 595 and the minimum credit score is a 580. If that drops you down to a 575, now you can't get the loan, right? So that's why I say that. Now let's talk about things that you should do. One thing you should do is continue to make your on-time uh, mortgage or rent payments. You should stay current on all existing accounts, even if you're paying them off. You should continue to work with the same employer. Try not to switch any jobs. And of course, try not to get fired. Now, of course, you can't control if you're laid off, but if that happens, talk to me about it and you know we'll see if we have a workaround for you. You also want to continue to use the same insurance company. Don't switch that up throughout this process. You wanna to continue to use your credit cards as normal. Uh, what I mean by that is you don't want to up your spending. You don't wanna close them out. We already talked about that as well. And most importantly, uh, continue to live at the same residence. Uh, don't try not to move unless you absolutely have to throughout this entire process because we then have to update, or if you do, let me know because we have to update your residence, your residential history on your application. And also uh, let me know if you have any questions and do tell your friends, coworkers, and family about us because as a mortgage loan officer, I work 100% based on referrals, okay? So, you know, of course, you can help your boy out uh, if you would like to. Now, I want you to think about applying for a home and going through the loan approval process like flying. 
when you go on an airplane and you have turbulence, you know, lost luggage, um, you know, you, you get a canceled flight. It never feels good, right? It never, ever feels good. So my job is to make sure that we have a smooth flight. Okay. So anything that I can do, uh, to make sure we get across country from point A to point B, that's what I'm going to be doing for you. Okay. I want to make sure that we avoid any of this from happening. And with that being said, let's talk about the truth of the matter, because there are literally 83 ways that we can hit turbulence. So let's talk about the first way, the first 32. So buyer, right? The buyer, there's 32 different ways that the buyer or the borrower can hit turbulence. I'm not going to go through all, uh, you know, 32 of these, but you know, some of the obvious ones that we've already talked about, like, you know, late payments from your credit report. Um, if you submit inaccurate uh, documents or information to us that could allow us to hit turbulence. Um, if someone is going to gift you a certain amount of money, number 13, and they back out, that would certainly change things. Um, if you don't disclose child support or any additional income that you may have, that may put a, a monkey wrench into things. If you have bankruptcy within the last two years and you don't tell us if you cannot locate a divorce decree, you know, tax returns, bank statements, you know, those are all different ways that we can hit turbulence or you can hit turbulence as a borrower. Now let's talk about a seller. If you are a seller and you're trying to sell a home, you know, you also can hit turbulence. There's 24 different ways that you can hit turbulence, but let's move forward because we're really focusing on buyers on this presentation. Uh, then the property, there's different things that can happen with the property, right? Let's say the appraisal comes back lower than we expected. That's turbulence. If your home is destroyed for any reason, foreclosing or the property that you're looking to purchase or refinance. I mean, if your county doesn't approve uh, septic systems and, and things like that, I mean, there's just so many different ways. If your property is incorrectly zoned, but we're not going to worry about that. Um, you know, we'll take care of it, all that good stuff for you. The escrow and the title company, you know, obviously if uh, they fail to obtain different um, information from beneficiaries, lien holders, insurance companies, or lenders in a timely manner, these are all different ways that, you know, we can hit turbulence and the appraisal, like I said, um, if they're, they're too busy to complete on time, because sometimes, especially during the pandemic, the appraisal companies were really slow. So it could be times where we have to wait three and four weeks for the appraisal to have availability. Now, the good news is now that we're pretty much out of the pandemic, it's no longer a factor at this point. You know, we don't have to worry about that. Most appraisers have you know, within a week availability. But of course that may vary depending on uh, where you're located. And of course the inspections, you know, pest inspector, not available, same thing, a uh, home inspector, not available, you know, just different things like that. But uh, I'm just showing you all this, just let you know why you need uh, someone like me uh, that can hold your hand throughout this entire process and just, Hey, and just be able to point to the ground and say, hey, look, there's a landmine. You might want to take two steps to the left. OK, now, if you're interested in applying for a home refinance, if you want to buy an investment property, commercial property, whatever the case, you can just come right on over to my website. This is it. It's apply with Now, remember, you see how my name is spelled. There's an L in there. So don't type in Kevin. It's apply with Kelvin with the L. Dot com. Now, when you come here, my website is fully built out uh, to give you everything that you need. As you know, based on my YouTube channel alone, I'm all about building generational wealth through real estate. When you come to my website, I want to show you something real quick. At the top, you can look at the mortgage calculator, right? You can come over here and you can play with this all day long. OK, I spent a good amount of money to have this uh, you know, set up just for you guys. So depending on, you know, what you're looking at, if you want to do a VA loan, if you want to try to look at refinancing because the rates have dropped since you uh, last purchased your home, if you want to try to compare, uh, renting versus buying, because you haven't really made up your mind on what you want to do. Listen, this calculator is the bomb.com at applywithkelvin.com. Utilize this, utilize it 
Um, if you want to look at the different loan options, you can come right here and you can look at all of the different loan options that we have available. We got everything from rehab, uh, different types of loans, um, HELOCs, jumbo loans, uh, VA loans, FHA, fixed rate mortgage, USDA, first time home buyer programs, investment properties, uh, DSCR. If you don't know what that is, that is for um, debt related income. So if it's an income uh, producing property, we can go based off of that. Even reverse mortgages, fix and flip, bank statement programs, any program you can think of, we have access to. You just simply click the uh, type of program that you want and then you click get your quote. But uh, let me come back to the home page and just show you something real quick. So there's four different options for you guys. If you think that you are not quite ready to apply, but you want a quote, you can click request a quote and see your different loan scenarios, go through this simple survey. And within a matter of 30 seconds, your information will be submitted to me. I'll reach out to you and I will schedule a Zoom meeting where we can go through everything. If you are ready to apply, all you got to do is just go ahead and click uh, ready to apply and you can complete the full online application. As you can see, this is uh, right here. You want to make sure that my face is here with my name and uh, my ID. You create an account and you go through the online application. If you are ready to apply, of course, if you do that, then I'm going to contact you and walk you through the whole process and show you your options. And, you know, we can get you approved, hopefully based on your circumstances. If you know you are not quite there yet credit wise and your credit score is, let's say, well below a 580. Now, I do have some programs where you can still get approved um, in the low fives uh, and some maybe in the high fours. But obviously, those are not going to be the most desirable loan options and financing options. So if you want help with credit repair, click this button. You know, I am the owner of Green Scale Credit. You can come right here. You can schedule your appointment. And right now we even have a, a special promotion running where you can save $200 off of credit restoration. All right. And then lastly, if you want to book a consultation with me, you click that button right there and you can schedule a mortgage consultation and I'll walk you uh, through the process and answer any questions you may have. Now, this is a map Now you can find this on my website. You just come to applywithkelvin.com and scroll down. And these are the states, the states that you see in blue. These are the states that I am currently operating in. OK, so we got Iowa, Colorado, Texas, Florida, Georgia and North Carolina. Now, you probably can't see it um, because matter of fact, let me zoom in, make it bigger. OK, so any of these states that you see that have a golden star, it means that it's coming soon. I'm going to be getting a license or reinstating my license in those states. I had it before, but it's expired. I just got to, um, you know, go through the, the hoops to get those states back. But most importantly, if you are trying to purchase or refi in any of these other states that I'm not licensed in, I still want you to contact uh, me because, for example, if you're doing a uh, construction loan, I can still originate the loan in most of these states, like 80 percent of these states. And even if you are trying to purchase or refinance a residential mortgage, I will certainly love to refer you to someone who is licensed in those states because I have a large network at Nexa of awesome loan officers that would love to assist you. Now, with that being said, um, if you found this video helpful in any way, you know what to do. Help your boy out by sharing this content and this video with anyone who's looking to purchase, refi, or get an investment property, commercial property, residential property, whatever the case may be. Realtors, if you're watching this, I would love to partner up with you and help you close more deals. Um, and drop a like, a comment, all that good stuff. Subscribe if you aren't already. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening, whatever time of the day it is. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.